Welcome again to our lectures on language theory. This is lecture number 12. The theme of it is word building in English, major ways and minor ways of word building. The lecture is delivered specially for the students studying at the Department of English and German Languages. The outline of this lecture includes the following points. The first, general information about word building in English. The second, major ways of word building, uh, which comprises affixation, composition, conversion, and shortening. And the third point is minor ways of word building, including back formation, sound imitation, reduplication, sound and stress interchange. Word formation or word building is the process of creating new words from elements already existing in the language. Every language has its own structural patterns of word formation. Productivity is the ability to form new words after existing patterns which are readily understood by the speakers of a language. The most productive ways of word building in modern English are affixation, conversion, composition, shortening, back formation, and blending. The types of word building that are less productive are sound imitation and reduplication. The ways of word formation that are non-productive are sound and stress interchange. Now we'll speak about major ways of word building. Affixation is building new words by adding affixes to the stem of the word. The two main types of affixation are prefixation and suffixation. Affixes can be classified according to different principles. They can be divided into convertive and non-convertive according to their ability to convert the word into another part of speech. For example, the prefix be is convertible since it is used to build verbs from nouns had, be had. The prefix re is inconvertible, arrange, rearrange. The majority of prefixes are non-convertible. The majority of suffixes are convertible, as for instance the suffix n, had, hadden. According to the part of speech formed, affixes, suffixes to be exact, are divided into noun forming such suffixes as er, nest, ship, hood, ens, ist, adjective forming full, less, ik, alp, able, eight, ish, ous, verb forming n, eight, pi, eyes, and adverb forming li and wide. According to the origin, affixes are classified into native and borrowed. The native suffixes are er, ed, dom, n, full, less, hood, let, li, ness, ship, sum, tin, th, y, wad, wise, lock. Prefixes un, miss, up, under, over, out. Borrowed affixes are by their origin Latin, French, or Greek. There exist numerous prefixes of Latin and Greek origin used to form new words in English, such as anti, contra, sub, super, post, vice. Affixes may be classified according to, the, to their lexicogrammatical meaning. Prefixes possess the following main meanings. Negation such prefixes as un, miss, dis, repetition or reversal of the action, re, excessiveness or ins insufficiency, such prefixes as over and under, time and order, pre, post, after, place, super, sub, trans, in, counter activity, enter, counter. Suffixes may point to the doer of the action, female sex, such suffixes as s, ein, et, quality, ness. The presence or absence of quality, fullness, collectivity, 
Dom Eric Hood Ship Rim. According to their productivity, that is, the ability to form new words, affixes may be divided into productive and non-productive. Productive affixes are always frequent, but not every frequent affix is productive. For example, affix, suffix OUS is a very frequent affix as it is found in many words, but it is not productive. According to the connotational characteristics, affixes may be emotionally colored, that is having derogatory emotional charge, and neutral, stylistically marked, and neutral. The next major way of word building we are going to discuss is composition. Composition consists in making new words by combining two or more stems which occur in the language as three forms. It is mostly characteristic of adjectives and nouns. Compound words may be divided into several groups. According to the type of composition, compounds are divided into those formed by just a position without linking elements, for instance, sky blue, timetable, into compounds with a linking vowel or consonant, for example, Anglo-Saxon saleswoman, here we have the linking uh, element as O or S, and compounds with a linking element represented by a preposition or conjunction, for instance, up-to-date, bread and butter. Compounds may also be formed by lexicalized phrases, Get me not, stick in the mud. Such words are called syntactic compounds. There also exist derivational compounds or compound derivatives, which represent the structural integrity of two free stems with a suffix referring to the combination as a whole. Honeymooner, teenager, kind-hearted. According to the structure of their immediate constituents, compounds are classified into those containing two simple stems, for example, pen knife bookcase, one derived stem, chain smoker, cinema going, one clipped stem, big girl, H bomb, one compound stem, waste paper basket. There is a problem of differentiation of compounds and homonymous word combinations. There are five criteria which help to solve this problem. Graphical criterion. The majority of English words are spelled either solidly or are hyphenated. Phonological criterion. Compounds usually have a heavy stress on the first syllable. Blackbird versus blackbird. Semantic criterion. The meaning of a compound word is not a total sum of the meanings of its components, but something different. There are compound words, the semantic motivation of which is quite clear. For instance, tablecloth or shipwreck. But many compounds are idiomatic or non-motivated. Butterfinger is a person who can't do things well, or blue stocking is a pedantic woman. The next criterion is morphological one, or criterion of formal integrity. A compound word has a paradigm of its own. Inflections are added not to each component, but to the whole compound. Syntactic criterion. The whole compound, but not its components, fulfills a certain syntactic function. Nothing can be inserted between the components of a compound word. It should be noted that a single criterion is not sufficient to state whether we deal with a compound word or a combination of words. More than one-third of neologisms in English are compound words, so it's a highly productive way of word building. Next way is conversion. Conversion is making a new word by changing the part of speech characteristics of the word without changing it, its morphemic shape. 
the word which is converted into another part of speech changes its paradigms. For example, if it was a noun nurse and it had it has the plural nurses and possessive case apostrophe plus s nurses, when it cha it was converted into a verb to nurse, uh, it has its it has changed its paradigm. And it can be used as it has it can have the third person singular ending s in in present simple or ending ed nurses or nursed or nursing. Conversion appeared in the thirteenth century when the loss of inflections made nouns and verbs look similar in form. The most productive pattern of conversion is noun to a verb, honeymoon to honeymoon. Less productive is the pattern adjective to a noun, slow to slow. The pattern verb uh, co is converted to noun is much less frequent than the pattern noun is converted to a verb, to fall a fall. Conversion is predominant in the sphere of verb formation. The semantic relations between the members of converted pairs are various. Verbs formed from nouns acquire such meanings as to fulfill the action characteristic of the noun, father to father, ape to ape, to act with the instrument denoted by the noun, hammer to hammer, to provide with the thing denoted by the noun, to deprive of the thing, to put in the place denoted by the noun and some other meanings. Nouns formed from verbs may possess the following meanings. A singular action, to jump a jump, the doer of the action, help a help, the place of the action, to dump a dump, the object or result of the action, to find a find, to peel a peel, the distance covered by the action. To pace a pace. It is often difficult to identify the direction of derivation in converted pairs. The following criteria may help to do this. A derived word, usually, is less frequent in usage, has fewer meanings than the word it is derived from. Besides, irregular verbs and nouns with noun-forming suffixes can't be derived. To catch a catch, caution to caution. Now we'll speak about shortening, or sometimes it's called clipping or curtailment. It is building new words by subtraction of a part of the original word. Shorterings are produced in two main ways, by clipping some part of the word and by making a new word from the initial letters of a word group. According to the position of the omitted part, shorterings are classified into those formed by clipping the final part of the word, episcope, lab, laboratory, lab from the word laboratory, clipping the initial part of the word, uh, phone from the word telephone, clipping the middle part of the word, for example, specs from the word spectacles, and clipping both the initial and the final part of the word, the word flu from influenza. A lot of neologisms are formed by clipping, for example, detox from the word detoxication, that is clinic for treating drug addicts, or leap from the word liberation, script from the word prescription. A clipped word differs from its prototype in meaning, in style, and in usage. According to their reading, initial shortenings or abbreviations are classified into abbreviations which are pronounced as a series of letters FBI, CIA, NBA, and abbreviations which are read as ordinary English words, and they are called acronyms. You know, UNICEF, NATO, RADAR. A special group is represented by graphical abbreviations used in written speech. NY stands for New York. Xmas, Christmas, yes. PhD, Doctor of Philosopher. 
and the number of Latin abbreviations I used in writing. Example, gracia, pm, ie, edes, ps, postscriptum. Now I'll speak about minor ways of word formation. One of them is back formation or reversion. It is a way of word building by which a new word is formed by cutting off a real or supposed suffix. Burglar uh, to burgle. Enthusiasm to infuse. It is called back formation because the process of derivation is opposite, opposite to the traditional one. Usually, a derived word is longer, work worker, but in back formation, the derived word is shorter than the one from which it was derived. By way of back formation, verbs may be derived from nouns, beggar to beg, television to televise, and adjectives, peevish to peeve. Nouns from adjectives, greedy, greed. A very productive type of back formation is in present-day English is derivation of verbs from compounds uh, in ER and ING as final elements. To babysit from the word babysitter, to air condition from air conditioning, or to house clean from the word house cleaner. Sound imitation or onomatopoeia. Words coined by this type of word building are made by imitating different kinds of sounds that may be produced by animals, birds, insects, human beings, and inanimate objects. It is of some interest that sounds produced by the same kind of animal are frequently represented by quite different sound groups in different languages. English dogs bark or howl. The English cock cries cock a doodle do. In England, ducks quack and frogs croak. Some names of animals and especially of birds and insects are also produced by sound imitation. Crow, cuckoo, hummingbird, cricket. Some scholars suggest that words may imitate through their sound form certain unacoustic features and qualities of inanimate objects, actions, and processes, or that the meaning of the word can be regarded as the immediate relation of the sound group to the object. If a young chicken or kitten is described as fluffy, there seems to be something in the sound of an adjective that conveys the softness. Such verbs as to glance, to glide, to slide, to slip, are supposed to convey by their very sound the nature of the smooth, easy movement over a slippery surface. And the last is reduplication and sound and stress interchange. In reduplication, new words are made by doubling a stem, either with, without any phonetic changes, as in bye-bye, or with a variation of the root vowel or consonant as in ping-pong chit-chat. This type of word building is greatly facilitated in modern English by the vast number of monosyllables. Stylistically speaking, most words make, made by a reduplication represent informal groups, colloquialisms and slang. For instance, walkie-talkie, riff-raff, chee-chee, dilly-dally, shilly shalling Sound and stress interchange. Distinctive stress, the shift of stress. The essence of it is that to form a new word, the stress of the word is shifted to a new syllable. It mostly occurs in nouns and verbs. Some phonetic changes may accompany the shift of the stress. Export to export, incre increase to increase, break, breach, long, length. 
Let's have a brief concerning this huge topic of lexicology as word building. As a rule, you are offered a set of comprehension question, questions. And in addition to it, you are offered a list of sources for further reading. Thank you for attention.